Welcome to our service of candlelight and shadows in observance of Good Friday, the night that we remember that Jesus was crucified and gave his life for us. We'll begin our observance tonight with a prelude played by our Minister of Music, Renee Kruper. It's called Jesus Paid It All. Sisters and brothers, on this night we come to remember the ancient story about the last hours of Jesus' earthly life, how he prayed and wept, how he went willingly with the ones who came to take him to Calvary. On this night we come to ponder his faithfulness and his sacrifice of love. We sit in the presence of the symbol of his love for us, the cross which is laden in darkness, 
each receiving an equal measure of love, yet also bearing equal responsibility for the darkness of this day. We come to confess our sin, yet also to embrace Jesus' great love for us. Would you please join Kathleen Bolger in the call to remembrance of Good Friday? This is the night when we have come to hear and receive the ancient story of Jesus' love and faithfulness. We do not come to this night with easy and steady steps. We do not come hearing joy in the words, he was wounded for our transgressions. This is a night of darkness, a night when the light of the world is doused. We do not feel hope as the candles representing Jesus' light are extinguished. This is the night when the cross of Jesus convicts us of our own sin. This night we remember our part in Jesus' death. This is the night when we remember the great love with which Jesus accepted death on the cross. We repent and we are grateful. Would you please join me in the communal prayer of invocation? God of forgiveness, we need your presence this night as we remember the suffering and death of Jesus. We shudder at the cries of crucify him yet confess that we know those cries indict us of our own participation in continuing to crucify his work in this world. We don't want to look at the cross because we will see it is our sin that is its foundation. Forgive us, Lord. Help us on this dark night to turn to you and repent. Transform us, we pray, in the name of the Blessed One. Amen. Our first reading is from the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah from the Hebrew Testament. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? 
for he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Our first lesson in the passion story of Jesus is the part in the gospel where Jesus prays at Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even unto death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Judas kissed Jesus, which was the sign he had arranged to use so the soldiers would know whom to arrest. The soldiers then arrested Jesus and led him to the house of the chief priest where he was accused of blasphemy. In the early hours of the morning, after the priests and elders had spent the night conspiring to have Jesus put to death, they bound him and sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, to be placed on trial. Let us join in singing the first verse of O Sacred Head Now Wounded.
Our second lesson from the Gospel is the part where Peter denies Jesus. While Jesus was being questioned in the house of the chief priest, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You are also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. Then he went out to the porch. Another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, saying, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter, becoming distraught, went out and wept bitterly. Let us join together in singing the second verse of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Our third lesson tonight is the part of the Gospel when we learn about Jesus being brought before Pontius Pilate. When Jesus was brought before Pilate, the assembly began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put on an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection, that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate 
wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Let us sing together the third verse of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, which with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. Let us sing together the fourth verse of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Let us sing together the last verse of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. finished.